You want to learn how to make your own AR barrel? Perhaps you got a lathe and you want to tackle this project. I'm going to show you guys how to take a barrel like this and turn it into a complete working AR barrel just like this. This one is specifically a modified 358 Legend. I'm going to show you guys the process of how I built this barrel. Stick around. So I first want to say thanks to Mark from Action Gunsmithing here in Lake Havasu, Arizona. Mark has agreed to help me out and mentor me through the process of making this AR barrel. He's an awesome dude, and if anybody's looking for work, I definitely highly recommend him. Now, as far as the barrel design and contour, I stuck with a simple, heavy H-bar design that utilizes a 936 AR-10 gas block in a carbine lathe gas tube. Now, I did this for two reasons, which is to minimize the cutting on the lathe since I had to turn down the barrel from a 1.28 inch diameter and also keep the barrel rigid. As a reference, I used an article from rifleshooter.com which has a detailed explanation and write-up on how to make your own AR-15 barrels. I'll put a link in the description below of this video for you to check it out. Now for this 350 Legend AR barrel build, there's a lot of barrel manufacturers out there that are making 350 Legend barrels, but they're putting the wrong barrel extension on there. Since this is a big bore caliber, it requires a bigger opening on the feed ramp. This to better mitigate scarring on the brass and have better reliable feeding for this cartridge. CMMG is one of the only barrel manufacturers out there as of today that are putting the proper barrel extension. The one I'm using today is a Tromix barrel extension for a 458 SOCOM. Calibers for the AR-15 headspace off the barrel extension barrel lugs and your bolt head. Now in order to determine the barrel tenon length for the barrel extension, we use a depth gauge and measure off the highest part of the bolt head uh, to the face of the barrel extension itself. After that you add about a thousandths for clearance. Most prints call for 625 thousandths for the barrel tenon. So that's a good reference to go off of and verify against your barrel extension. Now the gas port location and the gas block shoulder are all referenced off the face of the barrel extension. So to determine the shoulder for the gas block, I gotta first measure the barrel extension length. That length ended up being one inch and 120 thousandths. Now this caliber strictly uses a carbine length gas system. I found this diagram on Google and you can see here using a carbine length gas system from the barrel extension it was 7 inches 866 thousandths. Now we take that number and then we subtract 1 inch and 120 thousandths and that will give us the barrel extension length to the gas block shoulder. As far as the gas port hole I determined from a previous build that in order to have proper cycling and feeding with a carbine length gas system it needed to have a 90 thousandths gas hole. So that requires either a number 41 or number 43 drill bit. And to determine the location where the drill this hole, it goes off the shoulder of where the gas block butts up against. On the print, that calls for around 300 thousandths. Now I had to verify this with the gas block that I'm using, and I ended up finding out that the middle of the gas port hole opening on the gas block uh, to the face of the gas block itself ended up being exactly 273 thousandths. So that's roughly 27 thousandths off from what the print calls for. So this is pretty interesting to see because sometimes the cycling issues may not be where the gas uh, block alignment is. It may be where the hole was drilled or where the hole was drilled on the gas block. Now for this build, I want to have exact dimensions. So I went off 273 thousandths. And as a very wise tip, drilling the gas port hole should be the very last thing you do after torquing down the barrel extension. Timing your barrel extension at 12 o'clock to your gas port hole is pretty much impossible. Don't ask how I know, I found that out the hard way. Now the hardest part about making this barrel was actually contouring the barrel. Taking down the 1.3 inch diameter on the barrel blank down to 1 inch. Uh, this being a stainless steel barrel, we found that we had to use a steady rest uh, with roller bearings and take about a 600 RPM um, speed with a 10 thousandths cut and if you do the math that's roughly around 30 passes just to get one inch diameter so the barrel was cut down in three steps basically down from one inch being the largest diameter to a 936 for the gas block and then two inches from that we stepped it down to a 930 uh, thousandths in order to allow the relief for the gas block to slide down the barrel chambering this barrel was actually the easier part 
Using the PTG reamer, we were feeding about 200 thousandths before clearing the chips inside the bore. Since this is a high pressure cartridge, capable of handling 55,000 PSI according to the SAMI spec, we want to utilize full case support. Going off the measurements taken from the bolt face to the top of the bolt head itself using a depth micrometer, we found out that the measurement ended up being around 125 thousandths. Now, I didn't use these cheap calipers, this is just a reference for this video. So SAMI spec calls for a max case overall length to be 1 inch 710 thousandths, which is also my go gauge. Now we aim for a little bit of a tighter chamber and we wanted the number to be 1 inch 708 thousandths. Take in mind that the case head is hanging off the back of the chamber 125 thousandths. So taking that 125 thousandths and deducting it, our magic number was 1 inch 583 thousandths. So as you can see here, there's a jig with a precision dial indicator on the tailstock. This gives us a general idea of how far our, our reamer is inside the chamber. Basically, going off the reamer when it's spinning, we felt for a little bit of resistance, and that's where we started and set zero on that dial indicator, stopping short of around five to three thousandths. So as we got to the final depth, uh, we were using the PTG go gauge to get the 125 thousandths plus three thousandths to give us the overall length of 1.708. When we got down to the final one thousandths or two thousandths of depth that we needed, we stopped the machine and used the reamer itself to hand ream to a final measurement. Once the chambering was all done, we did a slight bevel inside the chamber opening to increase reliability on feeding. We then used a wooden dowel and an 800 grit sandpaper to remove the polished chamber to give it a little bit of a rough surface so the cartridge could grip the chamber wall. At this point, we put the barrel extension on with a little bit of blue Loctite and then torqued it down to around 65 foot-pounds. The PTG go gauge was then inserted into the chamber with the bolt itself, checking for barrel lug clearance in play. And as you can see here, I got roughly one or two thousandths of play, which is perfect. Now a simple little trick you can do to make yourself a no-go gauge is to take your go gauge and a piece of scotch tape. Scotch tape is roughly three thousandths of thickness and if you put a little bit of scotch tape around the case head and cut off the excess on the go gauge and closing your bolt, that should give you a no-go gauge and a good indication of where your headspace is. So the final step is to drill a gas port hole. We're using a mill with a DRO. Setting the barrel exactly at 12 o'clock we're going to verify this twice with a precision level. I found the easiest way to do this is to mount the barrel in a vise horizontally level and then use a quality upper receiver using the Picatinny rails as a flat spot for the level. That's really cool. I like that tool. Yeah. So like I mentioned, this mill is equipped with a DRO and we're using a 200 thousandths edge finder to find the exact X axis. Zero. Okay. And then uh, this thing's a hundred thousandths thick. So what I do is just because I'm retarded and it makes it simpler, I just come, I move this in the direction I'm going a hundred thousandths. Okay. And that's exactly center to the tool. So right there All right there hundred thousands okay that's center so then what i do i hit zero again all right now i know uh, now i'm a hundred thousand this thing's going to tell me where i'm at in gotcha to this edge right after that we double verify the diameter where the gas block is going to sit this one ended up being 934 thousands 467 that's center right yep. Right there, yep. After that, we need to find zero where the gas box is going to bump up against the shoulder.
Yeah, okay, so I've compensated for the thickness now. I always kind of get this back in center and I just eyeball that that's really in the center of the tool. Yeah. It, okay. I'll put that there. We know that's centered right on that edge, isn't it? Yes, that is, yep. So we're going to go 272 thousandths. <laughs> 272. Okay. And that's where the gas hole is going to be, right? And that should be right, huh? Yeah, that looks about right. Okay. Alrighty. Let's drill a hole in it. <laughs> All said and done, a very light touch with the chamfer tool on a drilled gas block hole, reinstalling the gas block in gas block tube, and checking the clearance on the bolt carrier group. This barrel is pretty much done. Now as far as the crown on the muzzle, I went with a 5 8 by 24 threading and the crown is a 90 degree crown. Yeah. So a huge thanks to the folks at High Desert Heat in Fort Mojave, Arizona for laser engraving this barrel. As a final touch, you always want to mark your barrel with a caliber. Three tattoos. Heck yeah. Get your finger in there. I love how it, 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 it just burns it off and it's, it looks like a little tornado. Yeah. Oh, that looks bitchin'. The frequency on it. Play songs. <laughs> Don't look into the light. I want to see the light. I can see it with the easy as a polycarbonate. I guess I should have put some of those on before I did that. Well, folks, that's all I got for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this little video of how I made this AR-15 barrel. And like I said, if you want to tackle this project, I'll put a link in the description below on the article I used the reference off of. Well, guys, as always, be safe, and I'll catch y'all on the next video. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up button and subscribe. Help support the 2A gun community and the content creators involved. Thanks for watching.